I want you to understand it, but if I sit here and I talk about depreciation and supplements, that's the shit that boggles your head, mind I got you. that doesn't matter. What matters is making money, getting customers, making customers happy, delivering value. The more doors you knock, the more kitchen tables you sit at, the more money you make. Today, during this training, I'm gonna teach the entire insurance claim process door to door to complete finish. Got a room full of people in here. Um, who in here thinks we can sign three insurance deals today, huh? This guy does. That was a quick believer. Love that. I'm gonna make a claim right now. I'm signing three deals today. Uh, I don't know about y'all. We're gonna capture them all on camera. Probably gonna get run off of somebody's porch, but I promise you, if someone's very negative, the closer that we get to a negative, there'll be a positive right after. A little quick background. I've been doing this since I was 14 years old. I think it's the easiest sell in America. And um, if you knock on somebody's door, Hey, what's going on? My name's Lee. I'm with RCA. I don't know if you heard about what's going on in the neighborhood. It's just not right. Have you seen it? Have you got one of the letters? Look, people are getting dropped by their insurance. Their insurance rates are going up. You've seen all the roofs going up, right? Yeah. Some people are being forced to pay out of pocket, but listen, my customers, they hadn't pulled money out of their bank account or their 401k. The roof was paid for because they had legitimate damage to their roof. Now, have you had your roof inspected from the storms? Did you know there could be damage? Can you tell me why you haven't got your new roof yet? I know you don't want to file an insurance claim. You've heard some negative things on the internet. Look, we're a local company. I've got hundreds of five-star reviews. I've been taking care of customers in the Tampa area, and I'm telling you, we had high winds from Adalia. We have had high winds here. All I want to do is give you a wind history report, inspect your roof, tell you how much life you have left in it. Look, if you have legitimate damage to your roof, would you want your insurance company to cover it? Okay, look. I'm just gonna get up here. There's been a lot of insurance companies sending out letters, dropping people that have 10 to 15 year old roofs. Sometimes the insurance policies doubled. Have you noticed that? Have they said anything in the mail to you? Have you seen on the news about how insurance companies, you heard about the new law? You have an older roof. Was this on your mind? When were you thinking about replacing this roof? Okay, look, you don't have to worry about thinking about that. All you have to know is that I'm gonna jump up here and take a quick look. Number one thing that I'm gonna say to them, like, this is a magic question to me. Why? It's, a, it's, it's the most important question in sales. Why haven't you got a new roof yet? When you assume the sale, I've been assigned the investigation. I want to know why you haven't got a new roof paid for by the insurance. My name's Josh. How you doing? Good. Uh, I've been assigned the investigation of your roof. Sean, owner of EHS. We've taken care of a lot of the people in the neighborhood. Did I catch you at a bad time? No, bad time. Dude, have you heard about what's going on? You seen no. the roofs getting replaced? Kind of, yeah, here and Yeah, well, we've had storms, Hurricane Adalia, were you here for the storm? Yeah. Uh, well, wind's over 70 miles an hour. Roof 10 years old, what happens is it could be creased, it could be have leaks. Did you have any leaks? No, not that I knew of. Oh, well, look, I completely understand. I'm just here in the neighborhood. I would like to offer you a quick inspection. If you have damage, your neighbors had damage. It was uh, Heritage Insurance that paid to replace Mrs. Smith's roof. So what I'd like to do is just take a look to see if you uh, have any damage. You mind? No, go ahead. All right. Why haven't you got a new roof? Might be a, a question either why haven't you paid for a new roof? Because I can't afford it because I didn't need it. Why? haven't you got a roof paid for by the insurance because I thought it was a scam because I didn't think I have any damage. So to me, when I go up to a door, we're all knocking, we're all out there selling. You just starts with selling yourself. First of all, it's fucking real. The damage is real. Is it not? Do you see legitimate damage on the roof, Yanni? 100%. And are there times when you get up on a roof and there's not enough damage? And so I don't have a way to show you what a roof looks like that doesn't have damage, but I'm going to give you a little example. Okay. This, okay. Is your best case scenario. You got like three tab shingles. All right. You're going across here. You got three tab shingles. All right. Anytime I see a three tab roof and I see any type of age on it, what do you think I'm doing? Knocking the door. I'm knocking the door because I don't need to see a missing shingle. This shingle has creases that are easily lifted. It's seals that are easily broken. 
And typically when I get on a roof that's over 10 years old, it's a three tap shingle, it almost always has damage, 80, 90% of the time. It's the easiest roof to get approved. And when I see it, I'm not chasing damage. I'm not looking for a roof that's missing a shingle. I'm looking for an old three tab shingle, all right? Now, if I go up and I inspect the roof and I start to climb on the roof and I try and lift the shingle and the shingle's stuck. And I, and I, and I look at the roof and you know it's in pretty good shape. If you don't see any places that there's missing shingles and the shingles are stuck to the roof and I go across the entire roof and I check every part of the roof and what I'd like to do is I'd like to create a 10 foot by 10 foot test square on each elevation and how many damaged shingles is there? Whether something struck the roof, something lifted the crease shingle. If I apply a little bit of pressure and the roof is lifted, the roof is damaged. If there's any type of crease in the roof, it's damaged. So if I have one, two damages, per hundred square feet, I'm probably gonna get this roof bought, okay? And I'll teach you how to do an inspection. But one thing about it is, is we're looking for an old roof that has a couple of missing shingles, that has broken seals, and has some crease shingles. And it really has to do with one thing. What do you think the most important thing about getting the roof is? Do you think it's the damage, or do you think it's the age? It's wrong. It's actually the repairability of the roof. Because you may only have one damaged shingle, right? But the roof may be a discontinued shingle, or the shingle might be a discontinued tile, or you might have basically um, a, a shingle roof that's, when you lift it, it's called the brittle test. And this guy up here on a roof is gonna lift the shingle, all right? And he's not gonna damage the shingle, but sometimes, to see if the roof is sealed, if the roof is too brittle, what happens? It rips. So it failed the brittle test. So if there's one or two missing shingles, not only are you not gonna be able to repair that roof, you're gonna, you, you, you're gonna damage more of the roof around it. You're not gonna be able to find a match to that material. And there's lots of reasons why we win the argument of full replacement. But I just want y'all to know, like, our job as insurance restoration roofers is to document this damage. And what, when we're going door to door, the reason why I go soliciting where there's no soliciting, where they don't want me on their porch, where they f say fuck you to anyone who comes on my porch, I'll shoot you, is because they don't know any better. They don't know that if they have an old roof, and they have damage and it's legitimate that I'm literally making money fly out of the sky into their bank account that's paying for it. And so I just don't give a fuck what they think because they don't know any better. Now, sometimes the circumstance, I can't help them. They don't have damage. They don't have the right insurance. Maybe they don't need a roof. But I promise you every human being that gets an inspection from me is gonna be better with me on the roof than without me. So it's my duty to help them get out of their fucked up head. And you knock on people's doors at really crazy times, ever, you, ever, you ever knocked on a door and just you just know that person's having a terrible day? And the thing about it is, a roof is an unexpected $20,000 expense nobody wants to be a part of. If you can add value to the home and help somebody save $20,000, do you know what it does to, for their day? It fucking makes them, I don't care if someone just died, if they just got kicked in the nuts, if they got a divorce, you get fucking $20,000, $40,000 for free, motherfucker, that's a goddamn good day. So, it's pretty simple. You know, you have to be sold that we're helping people. Now, when we get up on the roof, we're not selling the, we're not selling the claim, we're not selling everything. All we're selling is the inspection. It's like trying to sell solar at the front doorstep. You're not, you're not selling solar. You're setting the appointment. You're selling the energy consultation. You're selling the evaluation on the solar bill, right? Well, all you're doing is selling. So step number one, digital analysis. Sounds special. What's a digital analysis? Anybody want to guess? Think you measure the roof? Yeah, man. Fucking digital measure of the roof. We're going to measure the roof with satellite. We're gonna document the roof and keep a virtual file. 
You can even go up on the roof and make a video when you have real legitimate damage. Hey, what's going on? It's Lee, I'm on the west elevation of your roof. As you can see, that's two missing shingles. This roof here, when I lift the shingle, you see how the seal's broken and you see how it's been creased. When we had Hurricane Adalia, these, these roofs was flapping and japping and now water can go right up underneath there. I'm gonna have to check your attic for mold. It could kill your kids. But uh, I'm gonna go over here to the other side of the roof. Yep, you look over here, you got two missing shingles. Yep, I definitely file a claim on your roof. You're gonna need a new roof. It'll be definitely covered. Yep. So I do like a little video, video inspection. Okay. I do a, you know, like just for the analysis is, is that's really this right here. I don't have to give you a price. We use company cam. We can just export to a PDF and there's this app. Okay. It's called uh, Hail Recon. Okay. And it'll allow you to give a wind history report. Okay. And also hail history report. You said hail recon? It's, it's called, uh, yeah, hail recon. So this right here is very valuable. It also includes a line item estimate. Yeah. And the last part is very controversial. Why would assisting with the claim be controversial? I thought it'd be Why good. Would I don't know. Why would it be controversial? I think you were doing some shady stuff to try to make it work. No, I mean, the reality is, it's like if you don't know about the rules and things, you would have no idea, but there's things that say that only a public adjuster can file a claim, that only a lawyer can negotiate with an insurance, that a roofer is not allowed to negotiate a claim. And there is the proper way to do it, which is to assist a customer and educate a customer and estimate and to be conscious that there's laws that say that we can't act like a public adjuster. What's a public adjuster? Does anyone know? A public adjuster works on behalf of the policyholder to get the maximum value of the claim for a percentage of the fees, but does not do the work. Sorry. We, we, well, the supplement is different than like signing up a tile roof to get it approved and then getting a hundred thousand dollar claim or work. It's not that much different. It's, it is borderline, but yes, basically uh, a public adjuster writes a contract and gets 10% or 20% and just negotiates a claim. And there's this, they have unions and attorneys and they want to make their money. So they say that roofers can't do it. Plus roofers knock on doors. And so the insurance companies want us to stop doing it. So they make these rules. So you have to know what you can do and what you can't do. So if you call the insurance company for the customer, which we used to do all the time and they keep you on a recorded line, then they do this investigation, you could be subject to penalties for acting like a public adjuster. And that's somewhat recent in the past few years. I don't no. Think. No? Okay, it's been forever. Gotcha. It's been, a while. it's been around for a while. Okay. But as long as you do ethical things and you do right by people, these stupid rules about Florida, they're really for people they want to hang you if they could. So anyways, the assistance with the claim is simple. All right. Our goal, if you want to know our goal, our goal is to find damage document the damage, sell them on you, your company, and your process, get them to file a claim based off of your date, help them, talk to them during the claim process, don't dial the number for them, but give them the number, and then get this agreement signed. So, step one, do the inspection. Digital analysis is what I call it, just to sound different. Step two, all right, I'm coming off the roof. Dude, I can do an insurance close. How long is the average close for a retail roof call take? Hour. How long does the average solar deal take? Shit. Yeah. Two, two hours. Yeah. Shit. 
<laughs> I'm a speed fucker. I'll get in out there seven minutes in the insurance deal, dog. And I'll do like three deals in an hour. I believe you. I mean, three deals an hour is hard. Like I said, that's pretty impressive. I know. But I, I, I'm sure it's been done. I, no, I did a sub 10-minute deal. Levi, Levi w didn't even catch it, catch it on camera. So last time we went on a door-to-door -door blitz, uh, I signed two. It was like over a four-hour period. But in the last hour, we saw this guy, and he was, he was basically on a golf cart. He had Fiesta lights around the golf cart. You just knew he had fucking Corona in the back, just rolling around in the neighborhood. And so I, I fucking rolled down my window and I said, hey, did you miss out on the party? He said, what party? I said, you know, everybody getting their roofs paid for by the insurance. How old's your roof? He goes, 12 years old. I said, God damn it, you missed out on that party. Where, what address is it? He goes, it's right there. I go, yep, you're perfect. What insurance company you got? Heritage. Okay, great. Jump up there. Two, two or three pictures. All right, man, you got enough damage. We're going to get you approved. Look. You have legitimate damage, you want it covered? My guarantee is it's not gonna cost you any more than your deductible. Let's go ahead and let this uh, insurance company know what date it is. Looks like April 15th was the date of the storm. Uh, Yanni was actually there with me. It was the first deal that we did together. And basically he didn't see me door knock it, but he saw me basically get this contingency agreement out. And you can sell it or you could read it. So this is just simple, sir, I just want to go over this. It just says that you, property owner, give me permission to inspect the roof. You believe that there's hell or wind damage from the storm that occurred on April 15th. I'm authorized as your contractor to inspect and document the condition of your roof, communicate directly with your insurance company, obtain an agreed price approval, exceed, uh, uh, expedite the processing of paperwork, proceed with repairs within 30 days of approval. On, uh, upon funding, I will execute a contract with RRCA for the repairs or replacement specified by my insurance for a price equal to but not exceeding the full amount of the insurance proceeds. Understand there's no services for these contracts other than the awarding contract. I hereby award the contract contingent upon approval of my insurance. Contingent means if there's no approval, there's no contract. It says my out-of-pocket expenses will not exceed my deductible. Go ahead and give me your okay. Sign here. I've literally written this so that you don't have to fucking pitch a word. You literally read this shit to them, okay? And that right there is called the contingency agreement. Now, here's the math. The math is simple. If you knock 50 doors a day, there's no way you don't talk to 10 to 20 people. And when you're selling a roof potentially paid for by the insurance, if you get to three kitchen tables, you're gonna sell one roof a day. And one roof a day, five days a week, it adds up. You may not get every roof approved by the insurance. The ones you don't get approved, you can put into the process, you can sell retail. The process is move over to legal, move over to these people that get these roofs approved, and we'll talk about that process. But step number three, okay? Completing the offer. So completing the offer is about taking the photos, the estimate, and the measurement. And if it's, if it's an insurance deal, a lot of times we use uh, Xactimate. And what we want to do is we want to have the estimate ready along with the eagle view for when the adjuster comes out to the house so that when we come to meet the adjuster that we give them the completed offer. But sometimes, say these people don't want to sign the contingency agreement on step two, we go back to the office or we go back to our truck, we complete the offer, we come back the next day. We sit down with them, we say, look, I know that here you checked our references. We look at all these customers we serviced, over 7,000 in Tampa. Look, if we don't get you approved, there's no cost of service. This is not gonna cause your insurance rates to go up. It's not gonna cause premiums to go up. You know, this is something, that your rates cannot be individually raised due to an act of, act of God. So what's your biggest concern? Why wouldn't you move forward? I went ahead and here's your pictures of damage. Here's your estimate. Then you show them that you did the work they're not going to not sign this if they took the second appointment. Completing the offer shows the customer that you're actually who you say you are. It also prepares for the insurance claim. And so 
now, right, you've got to, now Florida's, let's say step four, meeting the adjuster. So this is the part that's weird about roofing sales, that meeting the adjuster is a part of the sales job. It's, it's if you're gonna get the funding from, if getting the funding is a part of the job, then, and there's some opportunities. When you meet an adjuster, you could make friends. He could use you as a ladder assist to get on roofs. He could refer you to customers that don't have roofers. There's a lot of nice adjusters out there, but the goal is to show up to the adjuster meeting for your customer. And the idea is that the customer is more sold on you. And this is gonna give you more chance to get referrals. But this is where you give them your estimate, you meet them, you show them the roof. Some rules to uh, meeting adjusters. Number one, you always catch more uh, bees with honey than you do with salt. So I like to fight. So as soon as basically someone likes to fight, I, it kind of triggers that part of me. And typically, I, I don't want to argue and fight with somebody that I know could approve the roof. But there's different people that can't approve the roof. Like, uh, and if they're douchebags, then fuck them. I don't mind arguing with them. I don't mind arguing with any of them, but the point is, can you argue ethically? And how do you argue with them? Well, this is not for new people. This is for everybody over here. It's like, you show them, you do a proper 10 by 10 test square on each elevation. You lift each shingle. You find the creased ones. You find the lifted ones. You find the broken tabs. You show them why the roof's not repairable through the brittle test. And when you're talking to them about why they should pay for the roof, you're making friends with them, walking up the ladder. You're saying, here, this one's damaged. Here, this one's damaged. Do you need any help? A lot of times I take a step back. I like to see if they're gonna start bringing out their chalk. See, you got cool ass adjusters that are just trying to be cool. And you got dick bag fucktards that won't pay for shit. Buyers and deniers. And usually, you know, you get to find out who they are. And if you start trying to argue with them before they show you who they are, then you could piss off a buyer. So what you like to do is just like sit back, let them go up there, see, make, start making marks, and say, oh, you didn't find anything? Here, let me, sh do you mind if I show you some stuff? What about this? What about this? What about this? And then you start talking details of why you can get it, uh, why the, this one's damaged or why that one's damaged. This is not as important on tile roofs because they just all go to legal. This is not as important on commercial roofs because um, only after a lot of damage because they all go to legal. And if you lose the meeting with the adjuster, it doesn't fucking matter because you can just hire a public adjuster or an attorney to get it bought. And we're probably gonna get 80% of the roofs that are legitimately damaged bought. So if you're meeting with the adjuster, all you're doing is building sweat equity for the customer. If you get it denied, you're rolling it into legal. And that's your moment where you start to switch it to retail or you start to get the power bill. This is probably the best point for me if, if they told me that they were interested in roofing but not solar. But by, I've done all this and I've met the adjuster. The insurance said I'm gonna to pay to replace the roof. They don't know how much they're gonna give. The process is now they're gonna come up with an estimate. It's better if we give them our estimate, but we're gonna wait for their estimate. Their estimate's always low. That's why Kyle exists. You're gonna give your estimate to Kyle, he's gonna get more. And so we just tell him, you know what? Instead of waiting on your insurance company, dude, they're gonna fuck around and go back and forth with us. Look, you can actually get a tax credit. You can roll this into one deal. You know, we can show you how we can do solar. I don't know if you had an evaluation. I can take a look at the power bill now. So since you got the roof approved, I say this is your opportunity to keep the check. Absolutely. And basically, this is a good point to ask for solar, but um, next, right, you got to get, get the insurance paperwork. Now, I don't have any insurance paperwork. Does anyone, Yanni, do you? He's not here. So, yeah, this is too basic. <laughs> This is so fun for me though, because this is like, this is, this, is, this is fun for me. It's like my boxing coach that teaches everybody, okay, this is one, two, and this is, but it's cool though, watching people evolve six months later, you're like, you're like oh, now I can actually fight. Um, get the insurance paperwork. So insurance paperwork is the estimate from Xactimate. It's you becoming familiar with the terms of how they speak their language. 
Whenever I go to a house and they've already had the insurance paperwork, all I'm trying to do is get a copy of their paperwork to find out where they got fucked. Because they got fucked somewhere. They didn't pay for peel and stick underlayment. They didn't pay for renailing the deck. They didn't pay for the flashings. And these are all the components that make the roof a lifetime guarantee a good roof and that will allow you to save money on your insurance. Because like getting wind mitigation saves you money on insurance. Getting a metal roof, these metal roofs are here because these are the roofs that make sense. This is the top of the line. We're gonna get to that. I mean, getting the insurance paperwork, you know, if, they, if they're only paying their deductible, you, oftentimes means that you're, you're getting paperwork that's less than what you want. Because it, it might be a 40 square roof. Preliminary, it might only get approved at $500 a square. It's 20,000. Well, Lee said that we could get $800 a square. Well, this is exactly where Kyle earns his money. So that's 32,000. So to get 12,000, we bill for renailing the deck, for the peel and stick underlayment, for all the flashings, if there's three trades for the overhead and profit, and then we get that money, and now you got a job for 32,000. But that customer has the opportunity to, look, you can either wait on insurance companies, there's five, six insurance companies going out of business, or you could just buy retail and we can turn your bill in. And it's easier if we just turn your bill in because you've already paid it. So your insurance company's already made coverage, but now basically um, since you're incurring the cost, they have to pay it. So if you can sit, co convince them that you're charging me more than my insurance, you told me it was only gonna cost my insurance. Yes, I did tell you that. That's why I got this guy, Kyle, he's gonna get my estimate approved. Some people are like, fuck that. I'm, only, I'm gonna wait for my insurance. I'm only going to pay my deductible. That's what you told me. So, okay, well, we're going to supplement it. And we'll, when we get the supplement ready, that's when we'll build it. So get the insurance paperwork. This is where I'm picking out colors. All right. And so getting the insurance paperwork, I'm going to sign the contract. I'm going to offer upgrades. I'm going to ask for power bill. I'm using... I'm using this right here from the very beginning. I'm telling them, you know what? They got laws in place every 10 years you're having to get your roof replaced. It just makes absolutely no sense to put one of them shingle roofs on your house. They're absolute garbage. Uh, look, I did roofs in Cape Coral, then th just three years later had to be replaced. These roofs, they stand up from the storm and they're practically hurricane proof. That's why the insurance companies give you 30% savings. Main thing is, is that they're gonna force you to replace the roof every 10 years. This one lasts you 50 years. It adds value to your home. Um, you like this? You like this metal roof? You've seen these metal roofs? You've ever seen them? Here, hold it. Now this right here is really the new fad thing. This is like for real hurricane proof. This is like the real top of the line. This is what a Florida roof really is. Like in Naples, the $90 million states on the beach, they got roofs like this. And it's because like, this is the best for the elements. It's a real kind of modern look. And I'm here, put it in your hand, standing seam. See how the difference between metal and shingle. So are you interested in a metal roof? We can sometimes do metal roof for the same cost as shingles. Let me show you how. You interested? Yeah. All right. So selling a metal roof is just like selling solar. You show the cost, not just the cost of the roof. Here's the thing. Metal is a price conditioning tool. Because if they don't want it and they can't afford it, then you just drop, then you end up getting all the insurance money plus the supplement. Same for retail. That this roof right here is fifteen hundred bucks a square. So at forty squares, you're talking about sixty thousand dollars. What sixty thousand? I got a bid for eighteen. You son of a bitch. That's terrible. Well, I'm just telling you, man. Let me show you how that is actually a cheaper deal. It's the same reaction to solar, is it not? And so with a metal roof, it's the same. So, sir. You got a $25,000 roof right here, okay? Let's say you ha your roof lasts 10 to 15 years, okay? How much inflation have we had over the last five years? Let me tell you something. Your $25,000 roof five years ago was $18,000, okay? Uh, in 10 to 15 years, your $25,000 roof is probably gonna be at least double the price, don't you think? It's gonna be $50,000, okay? So. You got $75,000 in costs right here. How much you pay in insurance every year? 4,000 a year? 
5,000 a year? All right, so let's just take 1,500 bucks in savings. This metal roof's gonna save you about 30%. So it's gonna save you about 2,000 bucks a year. So over 15 years, it's gonna save you about 30,000. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, the whole point is, is that a metal roof right now is gonna cost you 60. It's gonna last 50 years. All right, it's gonna save you 30% on your insurance. It's gonna add value to your home. It's gonna be cheaper than this asphalt shingle. The asphalt shingle is the same as gasoline, man. These commodities that are tied to fossil fuels, the price is going up. This is across the board. So roofing is no different. So when you sell them on that, you sell them on the added value, you sell them on the fact that they're like, okay, well, 60,000, I've got another metal roof quote. Now's where you start the, okay, look, if you're free on your schedule, if you can work with us over the next 10 days to three months and we can work you in, I can do a scheduling discount of 5%. So we're talking about, you know, about 55 G's. Well, I still got this bids 48,000 ducks. It's like, well, let me talk to my manager. Um, look, here's the deal. You know, if we can put a sign in the yard, if we can uh, get a list of three of your friends, if you'll let us make a video, then um, we'll do it for, um, you know, we start at 1500 bucks a square, the cheapest we can go on that's 1350 a square. You know, so maybe even 1200 a square. And that would be a pretty cheap metal roof, but 1200 times 40 would be like, you know, uh, 38,000 bucks, close right there at that number. And it's, <laughs> So anyway, signing the contracts, picking the color, picking the materials. If you tell them the whole spill on a metal roof on why it's better to go metal, because everyone builds with metal that can afford it, because everyone that has a tile roof is switching to metal that can, that's, this, is, this, is, this is the future, okay? It saves you money. The insurance companies recognize you save money. This is practically hurricane proof. It looks better, but I don't want to pay for it. Anyways, now you, now one of the ways that we brand ourselves, and I'm sure you can use the amount of solar per jobs that you've done and the amount of things that you've done, but like, you know, um, being like this high-end residential roofer that does a bunch of these um, really high-end jobs along with commercial jobs, that allows me to, t to charge a little bit more. Look, we do jobs like this. We will be happy to handle your job just like we handled these monster projects. And yeah, we are a little bit more expensive, but we offer more value because we give you a lifetime warranty. We give you better underlayment. We offer the best materials. You get the communication. It's a different kind of experience. So look, after the price drops, you know, now when it comes to signing a contract with insurance, they say, well, can you give me a quote? My insurance company told me to get estimates. You ever had that happen before? Look, I went through the whole process with you right up front. As a matter of fact, you signed a contract and your insurance company wants you to get three estimates, but it's not in your best interest because you've checked me out. Here are my reviews. Here's my process. We're putting you the best quality roof. And by getting three different quotes, they're going to have you go with the cheapest roofer who's got the least amount of experience and he's going to put the worst quality roof so that they can save money. And it all comes down to they hold money back in depreciation. They only spend the money that you spend. You're responsible for your deductible. If you get a cheaper estimate than your insurance pays, do you get to keep the money? No, no. You have to send a bill into the insurance company for the work that you've done. And if you send a bill in for the wrong amount, that's a felony. And I'm not participating in that. What I want to do is I want to show you how you can do it the right way without having to worry about going to jail. And that's what two chucks and a tr truck roofer does. You know, there's a bunch of felons in the roofing business and people out here running around. That's why I look at all these good reviews. You don't want to trip up on, you know, the wrong thing. You're buying, you know, someone that's done exactly what he said he was going to do. So look, my price is your deductible. Your total right now is 20,000. They're going to pay more. We're going to get the roof approved. You're going to get more money. It's going to be 32,000 eventually. Once we get it approved, we're going to do it for what they pay. And you're going to get the Cadillac roof with the Cadillac warranty with the Cadillac service. So go ahead and pick out your color for your shingles and let's move forward. So basically 
when the insurance company doesn't buy the roof. We are going to, in other places, come out and go through this reinspection process where we meet the adjusters out and we take pictures and we try to talk to them about why the roofs need to be replaced. Here in Florida, that's not what we do. We just use basically a third party service, an attorney, and that attorney literally goes and pursues the insurance company for us and then negotiates a claim and then we do the work for what's left. And sometimes coming out of the attorney's office, the jobs are a little cheaper, but the goal for the roofing company is to get a pipeline of jobs through this process. Because unlike solar, right, they don't just pop within the first day. Yeah. And this is how, you, how do you speed up the process? Mm -hmm. You become an organized machine, okay? Um, you also, uh, you offer them solar right here. Say they don't want to do solar. You offer them the opportunity to move forward and not have to wait for the supplement and not have to wait for all this stuff and just go ahead and sign up for retail and we'll get this approved. And basically you just swap them right there to a retail deal. That's how you speed up the process. You speed up the process by having the estimate to the customer within 24 to 48 hours and then getting the estimate to the insurance adjuster when you meet the adjuster. And then 50% of the time that helps you get basically the claim approved and they get claim approved faster so that helps you speed it up. But really what it helps you speed it up is we have an assembly line CRM and the guys that are my, my fucking killers, they're, they're really disciplined follow up motherfuckers. They're not just savage closers. They can actually do what they say they're gonna do. They can keep their calendar. They can fucking follow up through the process. And they just basically put these deals in content each step of the process. And this is, this is the beginning of the process. But, but throughout the process, like right now, I have a call center and in that call center, I've got leads that were signed as contingency and leads that we've signed as, you know, working that we didn't. And I'm just calling those people, offering them retail. And basically, if we've done the insurance claim, all, all that we need to do is like set a second appointment for us to go down to their house. If we've done any of this, is this more than what you typically do for a customer? Regardless, you have to do pretty much all of that. But for a retail deal. Oh, for retail. No, I'm sorry. I think it's like a solar customer. I'm sorry. But for a retail roofing customer, are you doing this much service for the roof for the customer? No, not on the front end. Okay. No. That's why you earn their business. You, you can then ask to sign retail once you've gotten approval or once you got denial. I just did Kamar Usman. Kamar Usman but didn't want to spend 100 grand on his roof. So he wanted to get the claim approved. So basically when he had a leak, um, I went out there, I fixed the leak. Uh, I said, we need to file a claim. We filed a claim. I met the adjuster. It's not enough damage to get the roof bought right off the rip. He's got a $49,000 deductible. So after building goodwill and fixing the leak and giving him a quote for 120,000 and filing a claim, the insurance denied him. So now I've got an appointment to go to his house and we're going to sign a contract and put him in the legal and he's going to pick out a roof. He's going to go with a like black roof like this. And basically he's going to like that. Basically, even though the insurance company hadn't approved it, he's in a legal process where we have an 80% approval rate. Now there's a chance Kamara is going to fucking not get approved. I already told him I want to spar this dude. He's going to beat my ass. But that's happening either way. But our point is, is like, uh, fuck it. He's got to get a new roof anyways. His roof's leaking. It's 25 years old. If I could get him a claim, that's good. But if I can get him a, if I can get him a, a claim and a retail roof, you know, or say worst case scenario, the claim doesn't get approved, then he just fixes his fucking roof. He just got paid $5 million. Why not? This motherfucker doesn't want to spend money on a roof. No one wants to spend money on a roof. You got to show him why it's a good investment. He's bored sitting over there thinking about how he can be a smart guy, not a fighter. Well, I got to go there next time and show him on a grid how putting a metal roof actually saves fucking a shitload of money, adds the value to the home, and is a fucking smart place to put a piece of his five million. And basically close that deal retail, even though it started insurance. But it's an insurance deal that will become a $120,000 retail deal. Uh, this process is different in Florida. Uh, 
because in Florida, it's the best place to do solar insurance and retail. I believe it's the best market in the country. And I believe basically going through the neighborhoods today, like our goal is to, um, I went through the whole process so it didn't make the best sales meeting. <laughs> But we, we should role play now. We can, we can turn it off, Levi. That's the end of the video. Subscribe if you enjoyed the process.